Hello and welcome back to another guide of Phoenix Point. My name is Saiken and today we're going to revisit our class guides, this time for Phoenix Point. As always, I'm trying to be as concise, precise, no BS, no repetition as possible and try to wrap it up in 10 minutes. And for classes in Phoenix Point, that isn't as simple as it might seem. Now, for starters, classes do have a modular approach. So there is uh, typically no build that's just focusing on one class. So I figured in order to uh, convey the message of what are good builds and how to deal with classes, I will shortly revisit the core skills of each class and will tell you how they mix and match with other classes. There will be a separate guide looking at squad compositions in nature that may help you to understand better how to build up a uh, squad. But within this guide, I will focus on the class skills and how to deal with each of them individually. Phoenix Point overall has seven classes. Three base classes, uh, the Assault, Heavy and Sniper, and four classes that can be obtained from each of the factions. Anu has two with the Berserker and the Priest. Uh, the Technician is the NW um, class and the Infiltrator is uh, the class of Sanhedrin. So with that, you do have theoretically seven classes. However, since you can combine them with one another, uh, there are actually quite a few options to do that, 42 class combinations to be precise. Now, with that many variables, there are clearly a couple of superior builds and a couple of less good builds. And I will shortly go through each of the classes and uh, describe what they would do on the battlefield. Let's start with the Assault. The Assault is the bread and butter class, mid-range damage uh, and um, a lot of just shooting abilities. It comes typically with Assault rifles and shotguns. In terms of skilling the Assault, you want to make sure uh, that it uh, fills that role very well. Uh, one of the best skills is Dash, which allows you to trade your willpower for quicker movement on the battlefield. Another great skill is Ready for Action, which allows you to immediately enter your inventory. Uh, um, all inventory management and uh, weapon exchanges cost zero actions, and that even can be quote unquote abused if you're managing the inventory of adjacent uh, characters. Onslaught is a fantastic ability to hand over two action points to a character that can use it better. And by far the best ability of that class is rapid clearance. Now, how um, should you use the assault? If you single class assault, um, sprint um, into inventory management ready for action and onslaught in itself is a very robust uh, framework. You can work with that, you can enable other classes and you can most certainly deal decent amounts of damage, shred and support on the battlefield. As and when you do have more uh, skill points, um, you would want to go for rapid clearance and the second class. The two classes that are predominantly good for, um, uh, for mixing and matching of assaults are on the one hand the heavy, because uh, you can use um, melee attack weapons to then uh, reset um, and uh, begin clearing the field. And the other one would be the Berserker, as uh, the Berserker's um, level 7 ability uh, adrenaline Rush allows you to reduce the actual uh, ability point usage to one and you get rapid clearance back. So you can build so-called Terminator builds where you are going through the entire map with just one character. Absolute strong uh, class to begin with. Generally speaking, all of uh, the classes require a lot of points. You need uh, at least 50 uh, points in order to build a second class. And generally, you want to have one prime team that does as many missions as possible. Every single mission on legendary difficulty gives you five uh, soldier points. And you want to use as many soldier points on a single class as possible strongly incentivizing one prime squad and everybody else is just there as and when needed. Moving on to the second class of today's review, which would be the Sniper. Sniper is long range damage. You can pair it well with a couple of different classes, but let's uh, shortly review the most important skills. 
Extreme focus is great because overwatch shots will be reduced by one. You can pair that with handguns and always overwatch uh, without needing to worry about uh, the action points. If you pair a sniper uh, together with uh, the um, assault, uh, ready for action lets you reload uh, for free. So that's a strong combination to always have at least a handgun available with overwatch. Quick aim allows any weapon usage uh, to be reduced by one point. Uh, that is great in itself for assault rifles, uh, but it is also good for sniper rifles, reducing it from three down to two. I personally enjoyed weak spot as the moment that you are shooting at a target um, without hit points, it also removes the armor. That in itself uh, will then cascade because everybody else can shoot on that specific field and um, essentially kill the enemies. I would personally um, combine snipers either with assaults uh, in order to get uh, the ready for action and a little bit uh, more uh, mid uh, ranged uh, support as well as onslaught um, or for the berserker in order to get uh, the rage and uh, being able to essentially shoot four times mind you though that's not as great as it sounds on paper because rage uh, will adrenaline rush will um, essentially uh, reduce your um, ability to hit and snipers very much depend on their ability to hit specific targets so uh, sniper plus assault one of the combinations that i can uh, recommend which brings us to the heavy the heavy is proficient with heavy weapons mounted weapons and jetpacks in terms of skilling uh, the heavy itself uh, comes with one best skill in my perspective called war cry you always want to have that 10 times radius you can reduce all of the affected enemies um, and reduce their action points by two i've hit up to 10 enemies with that which means for one action point and three will points, I have uh, stolen 20 um, action points from the enemy, which is just a massive trait. Allows you to defend bases without problem, allows you to stand behind walls without uh, problem, and just continuing to shout and shout and shout. One noticeable feature of uh, the heavies is Brawler, which increases melee damage. That combined uh, with the assault training that I mentioned earlier and the rapid clearance allows you to deal massive amounts of melee damage later in the game and regain your action points. You can further optimize that by finding strong man as one of the um, innate traits and then even using an augment called Vengeance Torso, which allows you to reduce melee attacks to one AP. Uh, making it possible to clear entire maps with that one build. I personally like to splice in Inspire as uh, the heavy ability, which allows you to gain uh, one uh, will point for everyone once you are killing uh, an enemy. Um, honorable mention to Rage Burst, I personally are not using it as much, but you can go next to an ally, or you can stand next to larger allies, specifically hives or um, very large enemies, and hit them five times with massive weapons. That in itself is strong. Moving on to Berserkers, uh, the potentially best support class, but worst class uh, in itself. The Berserkers are lacking uh, the ability to wield a lot of weapons, so they are confined to melee weapons and handguns, and handguns aren't really shining. However, Berserkers have a couple of fantastic skills within their tree that are just incredibly good. For starters, Armor Break uh, is something that I would always uh, suggest you skill. The next attack uh, shreds armor, and that's an ultra effective way of dealing with armor. Secondly, Close Quarters um, Evade is a nice add-on if you have enough points. Less damage specifically from melee attacks are fine. Absolutely fantastic is Ignore Pain, which allows you to be ignore, um, uh, immune to any form of mind control, panic, and even more importantly, disabled body parts remain functional. That in itself allows you to use two-handed weapons even if parts of your body are being targeted. Finally, uh, the uh, ability to adrenaline rush allows you to reduce the action point cost um, of all of your actions by um, a massive amount. They all cost only one 
And if you combine that with uh, onslaught and shift actions towards this character, you can um, deal out uh, so much damage in just one go. In this case, Grell here has an unlimited grenade launcher and she would be able to uh, lob easily 10, uh, 12 grenades a turn, uh, obliterating everything in her path. The cost of it would be dazed for the next round. However, if uh, you mutate your head towards the immunity to daze, you can completely negate uh, that downside. So berserkers pair very well with heavies if you want to go down uh, the route of mass explosives. Berserkers also pair quite well with snipers if you want multiple snipe, uh, sniper um, shots. And finally, they actually also co um, pair comparably well with assaults as you can use the extra shredding as well as immunity to um, body part disabling and adrenaline rush for more costly weapons. Moving on to Priests, one of the strongest support classes in the entire game. Priests are only proficient with viral weapons, so it uh, makes sense to give them a different weapon <clears throat> if they do have special proficiencies. Their top level skills would be Mind Control for starters, very uh, simple one action point skill. As long as your willpower is higher than the enemies, you control them and it will cost you a little bit of willpower every single turn. Combined with the right headpiece, in this case Judgment Head, uh, uh, it will increase your willpower substantially up to plus 8 in that uh, case. And if you uh, maximize your willpower on top of it, you will rush uh, the game with uh, far more than 25-30 willpower. Induce Panic, great crowd control. I would recommend getting that. You can um, use it quite far across uh, the map. Then uh, Psychic Ward, one of the defensive passive uh, abilities. Ten tiles around you, um, everybody is fully immune to panic and psychic damage. Psychic damage doesn't happen very often, but panic can happen, so I highly recommend it. And um, last but certainly not least, Mind Crush, an ability that can um, solve entire uh, battles within uh, the city or confined circumstances by itself, deals 100 uh, damage to everyone. As long as you have willpower, which you will, uh, it only can costs one action, can be reused multiple times, goes through walls and just deals an ungodly amount of damage. The class is good. Uh, priests themselves are a class that can work very well alone. You definitely would want to have them uh, with the judgment head for instill frenzy so that everybody else has a huge movement boost. Um, but they can also be nicely uh, combined. I personally ran very well uh, with uh, priests plus assaults. The dash ability allows them to overcome some of their movement restrictions. Also, the inventory management can be quite helpful. I've also run a lot of pure supports uh, with priests and technicians together, which really allow the class to shine and take care of the backline. Moving on to technicians. Technicians are the other support class of uh, the game uh, and one that is specialized in healing and turrets. Both of that is great. Let's shortly look at the um, remarkable skills for the technician. Fast use is definitely worth uh, your points as all of the stim packs as well as the arms of the technician are reduced to 1 AP, making him a very, very effective healer. Secondly, remote control absolute a bombastic skill as it allows you to take over your turrets in additional times uh, throughout uh, the turn. It allows you to take over other technicians' turrets and it allows you to take over uh, remote drones such as the spider drones. All of that is helpful, good and gives you a lot of uh, versatility. Field medic is good in order to regain uh, um, uh, destroyed uh, body parts that you otherwise couldn't uh, do, so I highly recommend that. Uh, remote deployment is another good slash great skill uh, as it allows you to deploy turrets for less action points, immediate um, actioneering and better positioning. And finally, the absolute cornerstone uh, of uh, the technician, electric reinforcements. It had been nerfed uh, already once because it used to stack uh, earlier, but it is still an absolute monster. For one action point, you can give everyone a stacking 
20 armor, which makes every single unit a tank. That armor also cannot easily be shredded, so the core armor that you wear underneath it still remains very much intact. It's an overall great skill. Technicians can nicely pair together with priests, as both of them are uh, supports. I have, however, also uh, combined technicians with assaults for the very same reason as with priests. More uh, movability and better support skills as well as better inventory management. Either way works fine. The technician as a class is pretty self-sufficient and alone standing and you should have one in your squad. Finally the infiltrator, a class that potentially would need some more rework in my perspective the weakest of the classes. It is a scout in a game where you can literally use drones to scout uh, for almost uh, no problems and in a game where you can move that fast that scouting uh, becomes nigh irrelevant since everything is anyway, uh, anyways uh, triggered. Looking at uh, the abilities, my personal highlights of uh, the uh, infiltrator were the deploy decoy um, functionality that will spawn a one-to-one -one, uh, decoy of uh, the um, of the infiltrator. I have had good success with heavily armored infiltrators that do not use stealth, but the deploy decoy uh, option to simply create a mimic beacon uh, tank. Keep in mind though, if other uh, operatives are within reach, uh, none of the enemies will need to shoot it. So it is only worthwhile if you deploy it very much at the front line. A great ability or uh, good ability at least is the spider drone pack, one of the weapons that I personally favor highly. Uh, the infiltrator is the only one who can deploy three drones at once, making it very action economy efficient. The drones themselves act as mini uh, beacons and they can also act as scouts plus armor remover. I personally enjoy it a lot. All of the other skills are meh, vanish is okay, sneak attack damage is okay, but requires you to fully focus on stealth. So what to do with the infiltrator other than mostly ignoring it in uh, many of the squad builds. If you really want to play it or it fits your play style, I would suggest uh, pairing it up with either an assault or with a technician. Uh, the technician uh, route has an interesting uh, arc to it as you can sneakily deploy turrets uh, that will flank the enemies. Um, the um, assault arc is more of a tank uh, style where you are deploying decoys and are fast in movement. Finally, a quick and concise review of all of the uh, mutagens. Uh, for head slots, I suggest going with the armored head and the day's immunity. We talked about it with the um, berserker and its ability to use adrenaline rush. For the actual head, I would uh, suggest to use Judgment Head. The Instill Frenzy ability becomes absolutely vital. I have made good uh, uh, progress with the Radiant Hope as well as a second head, which will recover a lot of uh, willpower overall. As for the torsos, the standard torso is the regeneration torso. Um, it also allows uh, you, besides the stealth penalty, to just rock around in absolute massive armor and regenerate your body parts. So that would be my go-to. And finally, the go-to for the legs in most of the parts would be the stomper legs, as they have a massive accuracy bonus. Stomp in itself is a decent option. You're almost not noticing the speed decrease and 30 armor is a nice little addition. Everything else is generally okay, but has its downsides. Those are, in my perspective, the cookie cutter selections if you want to design up a mutated soldier. Moving on to the augments. Um, as always, there are better augments in each slot. We're starting with legs. I personally was a big fan of propeller legs, not only because it gives you the ability to rocket leap and therefore traverse uh, vertical distances, but it also has a huge speed bonus. Oftentimes you need that uh, in order to speed up your uh, characters. And quite frankly, I very much use them with the next option, which is the uh, Vengeance Torso. You can find that on the right hand side here. Reduces uh, the melee attacks uh, by one AP. 
and that the combat matrix ability itself is absolutely broken those two together allow you to very quickly go to the enemy um, i personally when as and when using a head was always using the clarity head because uh, the immunity to mind control was highly highly appreciated it doesn't need to be on someone like a berserker but you can certainly use it for any other character just to counter that absolutely overpowered um, ability from the enemies so where does that lead us with our class guide we've now looked at all of the different classes and you might wonder how do i build uh, them i would say a few of the cookie cutter builds that i would recommend is a melee focused uh, build uh, with assault for resets of actions and heavy uh, to get the most out of the damage. Um, another cookie cutter build that I can recommend is any of the three base classes plus Berserker uh, simply for armor shredding and for the adrenaline rush. And yet another cookie cutter build that I could uh, recommend is a pure support build, in that case Priest plus a Technician. If you go with these builds, have a few supporters, a few melee um, or uh, close range combatants and a lot of armor shredding, then you can almost field whatever you want. As long as you stick uh, with uh, the main abilities that I highlighted, you will seldomly find yourself outnumbered and outgunned. And don't forget, at the end of uh, the day, you can also skill the other abilities as and when you have enough points. I just wanted to highlight um, your priorities at the beginning. As for muta uh, mutagens and, um, and mutation of soldiers, I typically run most of the soldiers if I need to economically be um, saving money with the Stompelex and the Regeneration Torso. Most of the B, C and D teams can use that easily and you can equip them and save a lot of money that way. Uh, the A team uh, certainly was, uh, in my case, using augmentations as they are the strongest form of uh, improvement. Vengeance Torso plus uh, Propeller Legs as a combination. Um, including reset of action points is something that is unmatched in my perspective. So if you want to go down the augment route, those are uh, the few things or pointers that I would give you. That's it. That's all you need to know about uh, classes. If you want to know more about squad composition, I'll talk about that in another guide. If you felt that this was helpful, try to uh, tango with the like button and leave a comment down below what your favorite build is. Thanks for watching and have a good one. Bye bye.